Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming and of course back to Wild Hearts. Today we're covering a specific topic, an important one at that for your general gameplay and probably your long-term endgame progression. I'm talking about the talismans of Wild Hearts, how they work, how to get them and some overall advice you probably need. Talismans can be equipped in the slot under your weapon and as you can see on the right I have a total of five equipped which is the maximum you can equip. The thing is each talisman actually has a value so you see that number there at the bottom right that says cost 46 out of 50. 50 is the cap of value that you can have in talismans so you might even only be wearing two talismans and be at your 50 cap. For example, this Hunter's Talisman it has a cost of 8, so when I add that to the total, it now is 34 out of 50. As you can see though, yeah, some of these Talismans can be really expensive on that cost, such as a Talisman that benefits your weapon specifically. Further, you can get Talisman of the same skill, but it actually increases the power of that skill. Take this Talisman for example, it has Final Blow 2% on it, whereas if I go up one Talisman, we have another Final Blow, and that has 3% on it. So how do you get more Talisman, and how do you get Talisman of higher value with with higher percents on them. Well, there are actually a few ways. Let me go through them. Firstly, kill Kimono. If you hunt Kimono, at the end of the hunt, you may receive a talisman drop. It's kind of RNG. Now, the quality of that talisman is also RNG, but it seems to depend on the quality of the Kimono you've hunted. So if you're running around hunting like really low level, basic, the beginner rage tail, for example, chances are you're not gonna see a talisman of any relevance or even see a talisman. Whereas much higher level Kimono, such as the end game options like volatile and deeply volatile your chances of getting a really good talisman there well they're a lot higher because the skill percents are going to be higher so when it comes to kimono to get talisman you just need to defeat them the higher level and more dangerous the kimono the greater the reward as associated with that but before you even consider farming kimono in the hopes of getting a good talisman you should know that you can pick up a bunch of them a bunch of really good ones immediately in fact you can technically do it as soon as you unlock that zone as you can see here i've reached a really high secret point on a map and at the end of this journey is a stone with a sword sort of piercing through it quite the sight but actually that sword is a relic and you can go and pick it up in this case i got the broken coin sunstruck which if we have a look at that in the equipment menu here has this skill strong arm water plus two boost the amount of healing water held when hunter's arm is activated quite a niche and strange skill admittedly but there are other options that you can get from these relics that are very good for example where i got this claw map Master Talisman, which boosts the claw gauge increases when the claw is planted in the kimono. Basically, what that means is I get more stamina for less gauge. That's an incredible skill for a claw blade main like me. But what's important here is that there's actually one relic talisman for each weapon, providing a specific skill for that weapon should be very good so it is well worth your time for any weapon to go see what yours is and probably equip it the relics are actually set talisman as well we were able to confirm that by having multiple people go pick up the same relic in that case it was the broken coin sunstruck and we all got the same one so maybe by now you could google which talisman for your weapon and just go pick it up but the thing is it's well worth going and gathering honestly all of them well obviously a talisman like this is going to be good for the specific weapon there are these universal talismans which can be incredible a fixed chance of reducing injury every time I take damage, that could be great, especially if I've got a free slot. It's all well and good me telling you that there's relics on the maps and if you go find them, they'll have set talismans and some of them are good, but it wouldn't be very helpful of me if I didn't tell you how to find them because there's a really simple and effective way using your kimono searching towers. You see, as soon as you pick up the trait that has this work, all these little question marks will appear all over the map. Now, these will also be Sukumo and Scrolls of Law, but a few of them will indeed be relics that you want to find around the map. The talent that you're going to need is Hunting Tower Deep Probe, which is obviously an upgrade for the Hunting Tower itself. This will then reveal those question marks when your Kimono Towers are active, and you can just go run around the map picking everything up. Honestly, it doesn't take that long. You get a load of Sukumo upgrades, which is great because that improves your thread count cap. You can even get enough to then, say, get a permanent health boost, and you make your companion really useful so it's well worth doing for that but then you're also picking up relics and getting these really good talismans to give you a starting option or even a very important weapon specific talisman on that note i would really recommend you at least have hunting tower expansion this is going to make your life so much easier for kimono hunting but it will also make this a lot easier to actually find all the relics 
To give you an example though, I'm just going to go pick some and run over and pick them up. So uh, these ones near one of the camps, I'm going to go pick up straight away. By placing the marker, it shows me exactly where I need to go. And like so, what I found is not one, but two Sukumo. So great, some extra old cogs there. And perfect, I found the exact example I was hoping for. Some relics you'll be able to find on the map, but you won't be able to actually get to unless you have, say, the Karakuri required for it. So for example, behind these vines, I'm going to have to burn my way through. No problem, we have the torch. And there is the relic that I've got, the Hunter's Sign Bloom. Hunter's Sign Bloom then is plus four on Ironclad, increasing my defense overall. That could be a very nice early game talisman, and especially one that's very easy to get in the first zone. But which talisman should you care about? I believe there's two types that matter. It's going to be survival and utility or DPS. So in the case of this one that I've got here, an attack talisman that only costs five, which is very nice, I get 5% extra attack power against toppled kimono, allowing me to go ham and get extra DPS. But then there's also utility here in that I will reel less from attacks while I'm up in the air using my claw. Some talisman only give you the one skill and it's one of these more unique skills at that, so costing a bit more for the overall talisman cost. Every time I just use a Karakuri, I get an attack boost, which is incredible. Further, there are some amazing offensive skills like Destruction Art, much like Part Breaker from Monster Hunter. Any breakable part is now easier to destroy, and things like that can actually make the fight easier, because when you break a part, the kimono will stagger, maybe even get knocked down. When you take a kimono's tail off, it no longer has as much offensive capabilities with that tail as it previously did. And then finally, having the talisman for your specific weapon can be incredible if the skill is worth using. In the case of Clawmaster, it certainly is. Whereas if you're a cannon main, you could get volley here at 7%. There's also another aspect of the talisman you need to understand before you do pick any, is that some require human or kimono path actives. So this one requires like the maximum human path to actually even have the opportunity to activate. How do I make that possible? Well, it's all to do with my armor. The equipment that we use actually affects our scale at the bottom there. So you can see that I'm in tier one human path by the equipment that I'm wearing. I've taken this helmet and I've turned it into a human path upgrade. This then activates the human path skill on it, Verve, which boosts attack and defense when I'm max health. If I wanted, I could also right now change my chest into a human path, and you can see now at the bottom scale, it pushes me all the way into pure human path now that I've got enough of that. We could go the other way and push something towards the kimono path, which would then push me towards the other end of that scale, and that would start activating kimono path skills on your armor, on your talisman. So checking if a skill looks good, like potentially Ancient Tree Champion here, you need to also know that this won't activate unless I have enough equipment that is in Human Path. In general though, I would really recommend that you have five talisman equipped, pushing to your cost of 50 out of 50 as close as you can, making the most out of your talismans. You want to create a good fit for you. Speedrunners probably just want anything that increases their damage overall, whereas a normal player is probably going to want a bit of utility. Some of those special relic talismans can even boost the amount of healing you get from a heal by 20%. That is a game changer. My advice for collecting talismans then is to get yourself around the world collecting all those relics. From there, you'll be able to form a basis with those great options. Then long term, you'll be looking to hunt the volatile and deeply volatile kimono for the best chance for those higher percent skills. Talismans in that way are kind of the RNG long term system currently in place to finish off a build. Very helpful, but we don't have to go that hard. Instead of hunting the hardest stuff and just struggling, you could happily just hunt say mighty or regular kimono and get lower percent versions of the skills that you're looking for. You might be down a few percent, but you'll have the skills that benefit you and your playstyle, which will then give you an easier time potentially farming those volatile monsters and looking for the best version of a talisman. It's good because this RNG system encourages you to work on a build long term and won't immediately give what you want, but there's also ways to easily get like weaker versions of the same thing and have it not matter that much. But there you have it. That's my overview of the talismans, the details of how they work and what you need to know. And my general advice on how to get yourself some talismans, some good ones to start with, and hopefully some ideal ones long term. If there are any other talisman based tips that you know that I've not mentioned in this video, then drop it in the comments. You might help someone. But I hope this was useful or interesting to you otherwise. For now, I've been Hollow. You've been you. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world our stage Is, uh, goodbye